Well, it was all about advertising for Viacom in the third quarter. Hit shows like Jersey Shore is driving a ratings resurgence for the network uh, owned by the company. And for a look at what is to come for Viacom, I'm joined now by the company's uh, CEO, Philippe Delmont. Great to see you again. Great to see you, Betty. It has been a while. Um, and Philippe, you know, on this day that we're talking about the GM and the IPO, I got to wonder from your perspective, are you thinking, great, automakers are back, advertising coming back for your channels? Absolutely. Look, it's always great when you have companies that have strong balance sheets again and they need to sell their cars and to sell cars you've got to advertise and we are actually underrepresented in the auto category so that category has been growing nicely for us mm -hmm. and we see a lot of opportunity with new models geared to young purchasers and of course we are very dominant in the young viewer category. So come the next time around these ads have to be renewed, do you expect that the automakers are going to be a bigger chunk then? The, the automakers are, are spending more on advertising. Obviously they had financial constraints when they were restructuring and now they're back. Okay. Um, can't talk about Viacom and MTV without Jersey Shore, right? A lot of people wonder, can the ratings be sustained? How do you assure investors that? Well, it's not just about Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore is a great hit, but we had Teen Mom, 16 and Pregnant, a number of other shows. And we're in the midst of a virtuous cycle where we have the hits drawing viewers who sample some of our new shows. We have a diversified range of programming reality, scripted programming for the first time on MTV. But there's still a big ratings gap, though, between Jersey Shore and some of the other programs you just mentioned, though, no, isn't we, there? No, no. We, have, we have a lot of the top, uh, the top shows against the young audience that, we, the, that okay. we go after. So it's a great story. Our ratings were up about 28% in the last quarter. It's even stronger now in this quarter. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very exciting story. And you tend to go in a cycle and when you when you get into this positive cycle it right. can last a long time so we're feeling very good okay another hot property that you have is john stewart we've been talking about the ratings just flying high for this guy um one media analyst came on this program and said look he's being undersold hey, okay how about this what do you think well you know we always want to sell more but we have we have a lot of great hits on comedy central another uh, another channel has been doing great for us the Daily Show, Stephen Colbert, the two of them together did the rally to restore sanity and or fear. Right. Yeah, 250,000 people live and 2 million people watching on television on a Saturday, on a beautiful Saturday in the Northeast right. between noon and 3. So, uh, well, uh, but we also have Tosh.0, oh, a lot of other shows, South right. Park. So, a, a, again, uh, as the ratings keep going strong, we can monetize it, particularly as we enjoy a strong advertising environment. Do you get a sense, do you have any sense of how much more you can demand then with this rating surge or no? Well, if you look at our progression over the course of the year, in the first quarter, our ad sales were up 1%, second quarter, 4%, third quarter, 8%, and the quarter we're in, we expect to see further sequential progress in our okay. ad sales growth. So that trend, essentially. That, that, that trend is continuing. There's a lot okay. of demand out there. Uh, I know in the last quarter, quarterly report, you guys mentioned that you're going to be selling Harmonix, which um, you know, makes that rock video game right, right. Um, rock band. Um, so far, are you? who are the prospects that you're going to sell that to? Well, we, we have a lot of interested uh, purchasers. Uh, we're right now in a sale process. Uh, we've uh, announced uh, that uh, this will be a discontinued operation for us, and we expect to conclude the process swiftly. Okay. Um, how much do you think you're going to get for it? Well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll announce uh, the lucky buyer when uh, the process <laughs> is completed. Uh, you think soon? How soon? Swiftly. Swiftly? Okay. A couple of months? Swiftly. <laughs> okay. Uh, why didn't it work for Viacom? Well, it worked. The product is a great product. Rock Band worked. Of course, uh, it was launched in the teeth of a terrible recession, particularly at retail. So while we had a great game, uh, when you had softness, as we did uh, a couple years ago and a year ago, we had a lot of inventory that had to be marked down. But so it, we also took a wasn't part of your, it also it's wasn't a, part of your core competency either, right, that, for Viacom? That, that's right. And, and we're, what we're trying to do now is to find a better home for a great game development company. Okay. And, and it'll be a better home for it with somebody who has more scale, who has uh, the, uh, the, the expertise in the games business that we don't have, the console games business. Now, we are a big player in the casual games business, and that's an activity that we intend to grow and develop. And we're developing social gaming components. So that's, oh, nice. an, that, 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 that's, that's an area that, that's a different business and a good one for us. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Philippe. Great to have you stop by again. Nice to see you. Great to see you, Betty. That was Viacom CEO Philippe Delmont.